Hello, people. Welcome to the class. Good evening for people joining in from India. And good morning or good afternoon. For people from various parts of the world. So I see a lot of uh, uh, students are still missing. We'll just give it a couple of more minutes because it's the first day. There might be some logistical problems. In terms of joining the class, so I'll give it a minute or two. And then we'll start the class. All right, people, so let's get started. I see a lot of people are still there to join, but let's go slow in the initial few minutes and we'll wait for our teammates to join eventually. Uh, first of all, a very a big sorry um, to, to start the course on this very specific day of February 14th and sorry for stealing um, the Valentine's Day celebrations, just in case if you had plans to do so. Right, so I had to take a special permission from my wife in order to announce this course because I could not find any other suitable date. Uh, I do have lots of other things coming up in the in the near future, and this is the two weeks time window where I where I where I saw that I will get some uninterrupted uh, time slots. And uh, for that reason, I had to announce it at this uh, uh, day. And uh, uh, how many of you had to take permission from your wives, spouses in any, uh, and also from your girlfriends and boyfriends to attend this training? Just a little warm up, guys. Please use the chat option. Please use the chat, chat option in order to communicate so you don't have mics as of now. So because uh, we are restricting the number of entries to every batch for Cortex XR, we will we are planning to give mics to every student. But this specific class is a demo class. So there will be a lot more people uh, than who have enrolled for the course. So we, we are only taking 10 or maximum of two, 12 students in one batch, at least in the very in the first two batches. That's what we want to do. The reason being uh, because it's a hands on training, we just want to ensure that there are no much hurdles, uh, especially when we are giving multiple instances to people, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. We uh, like say how the lab exactly works and what kind of access you will get. So we'll speak about all these things in, in a few minutes. But uh, yeah, so in order to ensure that uh, there won't be much logistical problems, and even if there are, 
we should be able to concentrate on every student and fix the problems for every student. So for that reason, we have broken down the existing batch into two different uh, uh, batches. So this will be batch one and we'll be starting a batch two also soon. Uh, so that will be around around 15 people in the second batch. So see, Manuel, so I started inquiring about enrolling, but by the time I got the information, enroll has closed. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Emmanuel, for that. Let's say uh, there was a huge demand for Cortex XR training from a long time, and uh, and and that's that's how that's why right, it got closed quickly. But the good news is you don't have to wait for a long time to to get the next batch because we are planning to roll out two batches, in fact three batches uh, per month. Right? So at least by March uh, we'll be introducing two batches, and then by April we might go three batches per month. So it's it will not be too late for you to join the next uh, batch. So Farooq says my wife wanted to attend it uh, by all means without any compromise in the middle of my work time. All right, cool. Thanks, Farooq. I see quite a few uh, familiar faces as well. You know, a lot of you are alumni of uh, Stock Experts. Welcome back, and uh, I hope uh, we will be able to maintain and retain the same quality that you got in the uh, in the previous uh, classes or the previous trainings. Okay, Emmanuel, let's say, let's see, uh, we'll take this offline and see what best we can do. All right, so uh, uh, we just want to, uh, th there's a there's a proper divisible number that we want in the class, right? So we don't want it to be odd, like 11 or 14. So we want it to be either divisible by uh, three, right? So because of the lab access that we want to give. So it'll either be 12 or 15. So just give me some uh, some time. Anyways, this class you are going to attend. So in the, in the, and in the future, Let's see if you're able to register. Okay, so thanks for your understanding, uh, Emmanuel. All right, then. So let's get started uh, into the world of uh, SOAR. First of all, let's go with uh, what we'll be doing in this training. Right, so so that you have the proper mindset of how you should uh, prepare uh, in terms of receiving the information that is being taught in the uh, course. So this is going to be a 14 days of Cortex XR training, right? So, and uh, I'll be talking about the curriculum in the next slide. That is from today till, uh, I believe this is going to be till 27th, 27th of February, including Sundays. In fact, Sundays are, sorry, including weekends. Saturdays and Sundays are the important days because that's when you get to practice Right, so for like say three to four hours or uh, continuously on Cortex XO. Every day there'll be one hour of practice uh, by the end of the class, but on Saturdays and Sundays, you'll be having three to four hours of uh, access. You can do that, decide the time along with your teammates, right? So again, you don't have to be, you, the, the entire team does not have to come up with one single time. Like say three or four uh, timings we can allow. We'll, tell, we'll talk about that probably by Friday. Okay, so, the assumption that uh, we are making is that everybody who is attending this training have a good knowledge about SOC and incident response. Right. So if you are totally new to security operations and incident response, then this course might not be suitable for you because we are not going to discuss about analysis of any incidents here. We aren't going to get into details of uh, how to do things uh, for a specific alert. Right. So we what we are doing is just learning a specific technology. And for that, for the proper understanding of that the, the technology, you would need a good understanding of the SOC and the IR processes. And I hope most of you here have this background already. So this uh, training is going to give you enough knowledge on SOAR technology in order to clear your Cortex XOR interviews, plus also survive the initial one month or maybe two months into the world of uh, SOAR. Right? So now, what do I mean by that? So uh, am I not going to be an expert after attending this training? To be very fair and honest, no, you are not going to be an expert. Right? It's because it's a journey. Called, let's say automation is a journey. So the journey can be put into five different stages. So at, where, at one stage, we don't have any knowledge about Cortex-XOR or any SOAR technology. So the second one is basic knowledge. Right? So I have read about it. I have undergone the, some trainings elsewhere. 
uh, or let's say on YouTube or any other uh, place. And uh, stage three could be, I am already using Cortex XO probably in my company as an analyst. So I don't have the admin access. I really want to be an uh, admin in Cortex XO, but right now I only have the knowledge of uh, analyst. And stage four is where you are already becoming a SOAR engineer. That means I'm already administering SOAR engineer. Or, sorry, I'm already administering a SOAR, in this case, Cortex XO. And the fifth stage is the automation expert. Now, this is where, like say, this is going to, this is only going to come by experience, right? So, and uh, probably when I say experience, it might, might be somewhere between eight months to even two years for that matter. Because uh, out of my experience, I can tell you, even after, like, say, uh, right now, it's close to around one and a half years that I'm working on Cortex XOR, and I'm still learning new things. And I'm still trying to figure out how to do certain uh, certain uh, things, right? So I'm still learning it. So that's the way it is. Now, can you guys just uh, tell me where do you stand in these five phases? Just give me the numbers there. One, two, three, four, five. I want response from everyone, so it will be good to understand the audience. Okay, so Dinesh says have basic knowledge. Uh, Wani says no knowledge on Cortex XOR or SOAR. Priya is same. Manoj is same. Venu has some basic knowledge. Murli has some basic knowledge. Faisal has uh, no knowledge about Cortex XOR. Farooq has some knowledge. Okay. Good enough. Three to four with SOC teams. Okay. Between three and four, Emmanuel. That's really good. So I don't even know whether you should be taking up this course or not then. Right, so I'll tell you why. Okay, you, you can probably join us as a, as, as a, as a trainer. So Pawan Kumar is saying, my background is into IAM, GRC, and audits, good knowledge on SOC areas, but technically no. Okay, so we'll see, Pawan, how exactly this can help. Because when we, in, the, in, the, in the very first day in this class, we are going to talk so many things about the process in SOC. So you will get a good hang of... Uh, whether you can really, whether you should really focus on this area right now or not, because if you are for, if you are able to follow around 80 to 85 percent of a class today, then yes, SOAR might be made for you. I started IT audits and trying to enter SOC. Okay, so Tosin, so that might be a little challenging here. So you are doing IT IT audit, so that means you are having a very good knowledge about a lot of things in security, but uh, still we need to be having good knowledge about SOC processes. Because it's, a, see, SOAR is an automation tool, right? So you cannot automate unless you know the process. So that's the, that's that's why I'm putting it that way. That's really good, Pawan. You have met me in person before COVID. Wow. Okay. So that's uh, very rare that I get to hear uh, hear the hear it these days. It's been two years that I'm only sitting inside in front of screens. So no knowledge of SOC, okay? That's a little tricky, Tosin. But like, again, as I told Pawan, so if you're able to understand around uh, around 80% of what we are covering today, I think uh, you can still pick up SOAR. But otherwise, I would recommend you to get into SOAR first and then learn SOAR. So Faisal says, working as SOAR analyst, good with Splunk SIM, excellent, very good. So which then definitely this is going to help you. Thanks, Pawan, thanks for that. And recently, Vishnukant joined CG. I see. All right, Vishnu Kant joined Capgemini. Okay, yes. And I now recall your name from LinkedIn as well. I have seen you, your name appearing again and again in my profile. Thanks uh, for all the assistance and and um, the the support that you have given us so far. Thank you very much, Pawan. All right. So a lot of you guys are in the stage of uh, either one or two. Right, so which will make you an ideal candidate for this training, because this training will focus on taking you to this stage of becoming a SOAR engineer. Right, so as I told you, becoming an expert is going to take time, because every 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 different company you work with, every new playbook that you build, right, so you are going to face different challenges. Right, so and. Only when you are good in certain aspects will you be able to become automation expert, not just by learning Cortex XOR. We'll talk about that in a while again. So like all our trainings, this too is a job oriented training. That means uh, one of the one of the let's say things that we always follow in SOC experts is that 
without having a purpose, without having a result oriented trainings, we are not going to launch any trainings. Right. So that means just for the sake of knowledge, I I always I am against knowledge oriented training programs in live classes with paid trainings. If you are paying for a training, then you should be able to get the result. If you are just trying for knowledge, then it's all it's already available in the internet for free. In fact, I'll show you right now in the, by the end of this course that like say all the knowledge that we are actually trying to gain here as a part of this uh, training is already available for free. Okay, so but however, when you enroll for soccer, any of the soccer experts training, we will have a lot of stress on how to get a job in Cortex XOR, how to become a Cortex XOR engineer, right? So that will be the primary, uh, sorry, that will be a focus of one, one day out of these 14 days. So this is a complete hands-on training, except for today. From tomorrow onwards, everybody will be working on Cortex XOR, right? So we are planning to go with the three students will work on one instance at this point in time. Three students will work on one instance. However, we will see how much latency it is creating and how much problems it is creating. And depending on that, we might go to two students per instance. But we'll start with three in the beginning. OK. Now, why is that? Because we are not only giving you, uh, like, say, uh, the basic privileges, we are going to give you the admin privileges itself. So you are you will be able to do anything and everything on the Cortex XOR because we want you to become a Cortex XOR administrator, right? So and for that, uh, we, by by giving everyone the access to the same instance will create a lot of confusion. Now, who created this dashboard? I did not create this. Like so, who created this instance? I did not add this. So there'll be a lot of confusion. So we'll only work with two or three people per instance. So that like say it won't uh, have an impact on the uh, the the instance. Uh, that is uh, in terms of performance. Plus, there won't be any confusions also as to what, who is doing what. Okay. So you think I should discontinue the class and wait for this class? I think so. That will be the right uh, option, uh, Tosin. But I, uh, you can still attend this training, this particular session, and understand how much of the SOG do you actually follow. Because throughout this uh, day one, we are discussing a lot of things about SOC processes. Now, for people who are still doubtful about why we should be learning so. Right, so not why so. Why so is a technical answer. I'll be giving it later on. But why should we, as security analyst or somebody who has who is in the area of uh, security operations or in the area of cybersecurity, why is it important to learn SOAR now? So as we all know that SOAR is the newest darling of the SOC world, of the security operations world. Right, so every now and then, every now and then the, there is there will be one technology that will outshine all the other technologies and that will take over the market. In 2011, 2012, it was SIM, right? So, and right now it is SOAR. In 2000, from since 2018, SOAR is slowly taking, uh, let's say, baby steps and entering into the mainstream uh, security operations. And till today, we still have a lot of chance. It's just booming up. It's just picking up this, uh, the phase, the the pace, right? So, and if we are learning the uh, SOAR, right? So it, it is going to definitely add a great advantage for our career because eventually every SOC team is going to use a SOAR solution. You'll see it by the end of the today's class, you'll get to know as to how powerful the tool is and how much it can replace the current SOC problems that we are facing. Right, so, so once we get to know all these things, it is inevitable that every SOC team should and must use a SOAR platform. Right, so and because uh, you are thinking about picking up this technology at this early stage, and you, yeah, let's say that is even before before the technology is getting mainstream, right? So you'll definitely have an option to aggressively negotiate the salaries as well. Just in case, if you want to really take up the control of the entire career, right? So and and be real super aggressive growth, I would believe I would recommend you to start looking for Cortex uh, XOR consultant roles. OK, that's the that's one role where you can start minting money like anything at this point in time. At this point in time, there is one role where it can start minting money. Right. So in fact, like say, I'll be introducing you to a like say a consultant later on in this training. So who is already working with Palo Alto? Even, even I work with Palo Alto uh, doing like say projects for them, for their clients. 
Any questions so far? I think we're just getting, in, uh, let's say, warmed up here. So, so I already paid for the class. So how do I get a refund? And please, uh, I'll be happy if you can help uh, introduce me to where I can take soft trainings. Ashur Dawson, let's say we will initiate the refund. Don't worry about it. And uh, yes, absolutely. You can uh, join our uh, CSC program, Career Switch to Cybersecurity program, because you are already in, uh, in the area of audits and other things. So it will be easy for you to follow using a career switch to cybersecurity, in which case we only focus on making you a security analyst or a SOC lead, depending on the level of experience that you have got. And post that, you can definitely come to. <laughs> sure, Emmanuel. So I think that's the, that definitely, you can definitely take up uh, that position and we'll definitely talk this offline, right? Okay, so how is the course structure? So 14 days of training, so the very first day, we are looking into the overview of SOAR. So today we learn about what SOAR is. Okay, so there is no lab activity for today as such. Today, tomorrow, we'll get introduced to Palo Alto Cortex XOR in specific and learn about its various features and the UI. And the lab activity is in order for us to get comfortable with the UI. Okay, because we are introducing, let's say we are getting the, the look and feel of the product for the first time. So let's, uh, we'll get, um, come to the UI and when I say lab activities, there are some designed lab activities, something like this. So there are some assignment templates that you need to complete. So for example, getting comfortable with the UI. So you have to answer these 15 questions. Okay, so which is encouraging you to check each and every corner of the product, which will encourage you to check each and every corner of the product uh, and, and get to get to get or to be familiar with different parts of the uh, UI, especially or the end and uh, eventually the different features as well. Okay, similarly, we have uh, various other uh, lab ac activities designed. For example, this one is for uh, lab two. Uh, you will execute the role of an uh, analyst. For example, somebody who has less than uh, three years of experience or four or even sometimes five years of experience, probably even if, even if you get a job in, uh, in a company where Cortex XOR is being used, you might not be given the uh, privilege to do any administrative changes on the product. However, you will be using the product as a security analyst, right? So what are those roles? Or if you are a senior professionals already, so tomorrow your team will be doing these activities. Your team, your, uh, let's say your L1 and L2 will be doing these activities. So you'll get familiarized with uh, what are the L1, uh, sorry, uh, the security analyst roles we need to perform before we are becoming the administrator of the tool, okay? So, and then we'll talk about integration, which is a major part of uh, 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 any SOAR implementation, right? So, and then uh, let's say on the third day, we'll prepare for integration. Now, what do I mean by prepare for integration, right? So, as I told you, everybody will be getting your own instance of um, Cortex XOR because we need to work with multiple tools. When we're doing Cortex XOR, right? Because we are supposed to work with multiple tools, uh, we want you to be ready having your own instances of different tools. For example, let me get to the lab here. Okay. Okay, so this is a lab manual that we'll be working upon. So the very first thing is you need an email address. Okay, I know everybody has an email address, but it's good to create a separate email address just for the for this usage where we will be pumping in all the spam emails, pull them from uh, that particular inbox and uh, work on them later on. Okay, so we need a mail server integration. So we'll request you to create one in Outlook. Okay, and then after creating an Outlook account for free, of course, how to integrate that in Cortex XOR? Oh, sorry, here. So how to, this is the integration. And then we will also create a ServiceNow account how to get a developer instance of ServiceNow. See, again, this is a complete hands-on, guys. We don't want you to, like say, just, uh, uh, okay, there is a uh, ServiceNow instance, go and integrate it. We want you to understand things thoroughly. So for that reason, you will be creating your own developer instance of ServiceNow, which is again free, right? So, and all the steps are given here. And once you create the ServiceNow integration there, so how do, uh, so I mean, how once you get the ServiceNow instance, how do we integrate that with Cortex XOR is here? Okay. Similarly, IBM X Force and Virus Total and whatnot, right? So hybrid analysis. So all these integrations you have to get. So even before touching the Cortex XOR from administrator point of view from a, for integration, okay? So we will prepare for the integrations with various tools. You will be creating an account with various tools. And why is that and how it is required? Why it is required? 
will eventually learn it. So day five, it's all about running some commands. So one of the uh, activities that the analyst does is to run commands aggressively, yeah, right? So uh, uh, whatever they have a question, so they'll be using commands to ask questions to various tools. So we'll be we we'll get comfortable with some tasks. After we integrate, right? So we will start working on the commands. Now, on the first weekend, that will be our primary responsibility. Probably one hour is not enough to uh, prepare for this integration. So we will uh, definitely give more time here. Uh, but in the weekend, we'll make sure that, like say, everybody has the integration ready and also be able to execute the commands that we have given you. So we are getting comfortable with all the different aspects of uh, the product. So that means the first week is almost like say kind of getting the getting uh, like say getting introduced to various features of the product. The second week is where we start getting a little bit administrative task. For example, by creating playbooks. Right. So we'll we'll create one simple playbook, uh, like a straightforward playbook, and then also get into learning something called as UCD, use case design. Now, use case design is something that you have to work with multiple teams, understand the flow as to what the company is currently doing, and you have to automate it. More often than not, in this particular uh, training, we will always consider ourselves, we will also we will always put ourselves in the shoes of a consultant. Like say in most of the examples that I give you, and uh, the way we speak about, uh, let's like say becoming a sore, uh, or let's like say becoming a sore administrator here, we'll always put ourselves in the shoes of a sore consultant. So that a lot of times we'll be talking like, say we have to check with the customer as to what the customer SOC team is currently doing. Talk with the security analyst, talk with the, the SOC manager, talk, talk with the SOC lead and get to know about how the processes are being run. Right, so, and during that phase, we'll also, get to know how a use case is designed. And we'll uh, create two different uh, playbooks. In fact, I uh, we are planning for the third one as well, which we'll be giving as an assignment. So we'll be creating two playbooks live in front of you. Plus, you'll be reproducing the same uh, playbooks with, in your instances with your own integrations. Okay, That means all the integration that you have done here will be used in these playbooks. We also talk about some additional features like layouts, reports, and uh, bring your own integration. Okay, so this is where probably I'm even I'm not uh, completely aware of, uh, especially the bring your own integration part, wherein I'll be introducing you to additional uh, another uh, trainer, and he'll be taking care of uh, uh, this particular day. So on the twelfth day, we'll concentrate on building your experience. That means uh, what are the uh, CV points that we need to highlight in uh, from a Cortex XR point of view? Right. So now for people who don't want to go as a complete fresher. I mean, say, complete newbie in the area of Cortex XR and want to showcase uh, saying that, like, say, I have worked upon worked on Cortex XR in the past, right? So, how to build your stories, right? So, probably I'll share you a couple of my own stories and then you can try to implement that in your own uh, experience. And you will also start giving a mock interview, right? So, uh, one or two mock interviews. We do, uh, again, you, we always check the pulse of the industry and based on that, we create the courses. Most of you already know this because most of you are already alumni of SOC experts. So in the recent past, in the last two months, I have asked so many people to attend the Cortex XOR interviews. Okay, all of our students who are working in SOAR and even if they are not working in SOAR, even if they are not working in SOAR who has some basic idea about Cortex XOR, just throw a sprinkle the words of Cortex XOR here and there in your CV and start attending Cortex XOR interviews, collect the questions. So we have collected more than 50 plus questions uh, uh, that will be asked in the interviews. And pro uh, trust me, if you can prepare on all those questions, nobody can beat you in uh, in the interviews from a Cortex XOR point of view. Okay, that's very specific to Cortex XOR. All right, on the last two days, the, again the weekend, uh, you'll be working on uh, the lab. So I think uh, definitely you'll be having some, uh, once that, now that we have completed the entire training, you will have so many things to do, go back and do. Maybe uh, 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 create the playbook again, or have some queries uh, with the UI or with a, with a specific task. So all these things will be clarified on the last two days uh, along with the lab activity. Any questions here? So I see, uh, will the class recordings be available? Yes, uh, Dinesh, the class recordings will definitely be made available every day. I'll talk about that, uh, Farooq. Give me some time here. I do have that uh, as, covered as a part of the, um, the slides here, 
but uh, if you're asking me if there is if, are we trying to cover python as uh, this uh, within the course no we are not trying to make you a scripting expert so we are only going to, going to introduce you to that tool as of now so um, we are working on a on a on a, on a course a two weeks course again dedicated for uh, on python uh, for uh, it administrators right so but that's going to take a little bit of time Right now, we, we, we will only be focusing on Cortex Excel. In fact, there's a question like, say, can I survive without knowing scripting languages? Any other question? Sure, Emmanuel, go ahead. Uh, no, no, we will be talking about that. We'll be talking about that uh, while talking about the, the advanced things here. So on day 11th. Right, so but we'll not be uh, touching the data like as such. So the back end and uh, let's say the uh, back end stuff, the issues that we are facing on a regular basis, uh, uh, some uh, some administrative related activities will be touch basing upon, but we'll not go deep. Content packs, yes, it's as a part of integration comes content packs. Everything, uh, you know, so apart from installation, because again, don't worry about, I'll talk, tell you why we should not be worried about installation, right? So we'll talk about that. Apart from installation, I think you'll almost be doing almost all uh, all the Cortex XOR admin activities, or the generic one. See, the thing is, this is how it works, right? It's an 80-20 rule. It's an 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, we'll be working on 20% of the features. So we'll be focusing on those important features that we will be working on on a regular basis. Right, so that is how the course is designed. So I'm already attending CSC program. Can I take this course apparently? I would not recommend that, Priya. I would not recommend that. Please get into SOC first. At least work there for six months. Or if not six months, at least two to three months. Okay, get a hold of the SOC processes and then you can take up this course. Uh, yes, we will be doing. Uh, we will be adding this, uh, let's say, uh, details to the same course. We might uh, increase the duration of the course. Maybe it might be made as a three-week course later on, and we will be adding additional details as well. Uh, if you are talking about coverage of the topic, no, this is a dedicated. Uh, I'm answering uh, forward questions here. Will we be talking about uh, any other products? No. I, uh, of course, we'll be talking about the other vendors. What are the, who are the other vendors? But we'll not be introducing you to those tools. In, in fact, like, even I have not uh, uh, learned those tools, or even I have not been exposed to those tools. So no. Uh, yes, if you see here, use case creation. So day eight, lab six. And in fact, like I said, day eight, nine, and 10. So all those are actually use cases only. Day eight, nine, and ten. Three days we'll be working on use case creation, or what we call what Palo Alto calls it as use case design. In fact, like I said, that's where we spend a lot of time. That is where a Cortex uh, uh, engineer would be spending a lot of time. Again, thirty days will be covered as part of integration only. You'll you'll, you'll get some idea about uh, it uh, today itself, you know. Covers, yes, you, you got it right. So it will be covered as as part of integration only. Right. Wonderful then. So let's get into SOAR and try to understand what it is. Right. So get, get an overview. Let's say today's topic is about uh, overview about SOAR, right? So let's understand what SOAR is all about. Again, I have noticed that most of you, uh, let's say, gave the rating or let's say marked yourself as one that is no knowledge about SOAR. So I might be going a little bit basic for a couple of minutes and then we'll dive into uh, some advanced things or let's say related topics about features and other things. So obvious question, what is SOAR? SOAR stands for Security Orchestration, Automation and Response. Okay, so according to me, the important words here are orchestration and automation. Okay, response, I don't know why they have included that as a part of the name itself. The name was coined by Gartner. Gartner is an independent research company that does a kind of uh, review and rating systems for various products. 
various technologies, including a lot of technologies in security area. And uh, these people coined the term SOAR, S-O-A-R, stands for Security Orchestration Automation and Response. I really don't understand why they have to put response there. Maybe they did not like SOA, SOA. Uh, so I had they have to put sore there. I'll tell you why exactly it means. So am I saying that let's say response is not important? No, it is very important, in fact, but it's already included as a part of automation itself. Now, what is the meaning of orchestration and automation? If they are the important things, what do you what are those? Orchestration means centrally controlling or coordinating between various IT technologies centrally controlling and coordinating between various IT technologies. Now, I have carefully put the word here, IT technologies. I did not mention about security solutions only. Anything in terms of uh, IT infrastructure can be centrally controlled or coordinated. Of course, there are some limitations for that. We'll look into that in the near future. Uh, but it can be centrally controlled and a lot of coordination can be done through the source solution. Technologies like your Active Directory, email server, SIM solution, threat intelligence, firewalls, email gateways, web gateways, XDRs. You name a IT infrastructure tool, probably, uh, like say, most of the SOAR will have an integration with them. So most of the SOAR will be able to talk to them and centrally uh, control and coordinate between various uh, IT technologies. Now, automation is automate every aspect of security operations. Now, right from the way, from the time till the alert generation, till the time the incident is closed right from the time the alert is generated till the time the incident is closed, every aspect of uh, SOC operations can be automated. So it could be a simple thing like analyzing a triggered alert, right? so checking to see if uh, this has happened in the past or like say what's ha happening with the user account, what's happening with the host uh, or like say what's happening with the IP address, uh, public IP address, so those kind of things. Connect with the users to educate or uh, collect information. That means, uh, Think about it, right? So every now and then, like say, as a security analyst, we will be connecting with our end users, either to collect some information or even to just check, are you even trying to log into these servers? Like say, I, we are seeing some, uh, like say, login attempts coming in from Russia. Have you moved to Russia? Or like say, have you traveled to Russia? If not moved, right? So those kind of questions. Or else, in most of the SOC teams that I have worked with, uh, if not collecting the information, we'll definitely send mails to educate the users, especially when they put the pen drives and like say, a malware is detected. So we'll educate them, kind of a warning as well, and it will shape up the behavior of the user by, by telling them that, like, say, you are being monitored, right? So those kind of things can also be done. It could be as simple as creating tickets. We can automate creating tickets because at least as of now, quite a few SOC teams, the responsibility ends when we identify a malicious activity, okay? Our responsibility starts the SOC team's responsibility starts when we identify a suspicious activity. And in most of the cases, in the current uh, SOC, our responsibility ends when we confirm that it is actually a malicious uh, incident or a false positive. Wherein, we'll just raise a ticket and a different team, maybe an, a dedicated IR team or a subject matter expert in a specific area will take care of the uh, incident remediation or incident response. So for that, obviously, as a SOC analyst, I will be creating tickets. So that can be automated. And more importantly, even the response can be automated using Cortex XOR or any source for that matter. Now, what do I mean by response? Right. So disabling a user account temporarily because there is a brute force attack happening on that particular server. So disable that account. Right. So perform a vulnerability assessment scan on a machine which is acting a little weird. Right, so we can trigger, uh, uh, let's say, uh, let's say the instructions in order to perform a deep scan, a full scan on one of the machines, which is acting a little weird, right? So because uh, the the last scan was run uh, 30 or let's say maybe even 45 days ago, so we are not sure whether uh, there are any new applications that have been installed or any upgrades that have been done or any new vulnerabilities been identified in that machine, which might have been taken advantage of, and that's why the machine is become uh, behaving a little weird. So those kind of uh, response actions, including blocking an IP address on the firewall, blocking a URL on the web gateway, blocking a domain on the, uh, blacklisting a domain on the email gateway. So all these response actions can be taken by the SOAR tool itself automatically. Okay. So that's where the, the, the security 
obviously i don't have to define security anything and everything that we do right so e is for security orchestration automation and response now automation has is is a very common thing in the in current world right so in the last 10 15 years so we, everybody talks about automation right whereas when it, when i talk about so right this is dedicatedly designed for security operations only this soar is dedicatedly designed for security to address the pain points of security operations only and not for any other kind of automation right so for example you take ansible it's a it's mostly a generic automation tool right so you can plug in ansible everywhere and anywhere and you can convert that into even a soar tool for that matter in here. but however ansible is mostly used by the cloud developers uh, to implement a devop, devops and other things soar when we talk about soar it's a tool meant to solve the problems of security operations only any questions so far just give me a all good ag just type in ag if you don't have any questions that will give me some motivation to move ahead if i see a lot of ags i get i understand that you guys are listening and things are good wonderful Exclusive to Palo Alto, um, I don't understand the complete question. So, if you're talking about Cortex XR, yes, Cortex XR is Palo Alto, but I don't get the question. I'm sorry. Yeah, Cortex XR is obviously very specific to Palo Alto, but uh, these things can be done by any sort sort platform, by that matter. Right, so uh, uh, let's say any source. I'll be introducing to various uh, vendors who are developing source now, or who are who have source technology now. Almost all the source can do these things. Almost all the source can do these things. All right. Now, uh, for people who are asking as to why, I mean, let's say, uh, aren't we lacking enough uh, security solutions in, the, uh, let's say, are we having a few solutions in the security world right now that we have to introduce a new solution, uh, which is again going to be a big botherance for us? Why should we even introduce this? So we had a lot of technologies to protect and prevent attacks. We have SIM solution now in order to monitor and detect alerts. So that's good enough. Now, why should we introduce another solution in the market? I'll talk about that, Faro. Uh, everything is bought. Now, don't I like say again? Not I'll not say it's as bought automation, right? So everything is automation here, right? So by the end of this class today, you'll be surprised as to to what extent we can use automation. Okay, so I would not say bought. I would probably call it as through automation. Yes, ticketing a uh, like say creating a ticket. Checking the status of the ticket, closing the ticket, everything can be done. Now, when the confidence of the Cortex uh, Soar took technology in, uh, increases amongst the user community, right? So you don't even have to create the tickets there anymore because Cortex XOR can directly take the actions, necessary actions. We'll talk about that. Like say the next slides, few slides are what can we actually automate? But let's uh, discuss about why. We need a SOAR technology right now. The requirement of a SOAR technology can be understood by discussing about the pain points of a traditional SOC team, of existing SOC team. I would like say even calling them traditional is a, is a wrong word here because most of the SOC teams right now do not have a SOAR platform. Now, what are the pain points of the current SOC team? The very biggest uh, and the first problem and the biggest problem is too many alerts, which is leading to alert fatigue. Now, surprisingly, even when a account is created, when a user account is created, there should be an alert for that. And in a lot of uh, SOC teams, we do create an alert. We do create an alert whenever a user account is created. Now, user account creation might be a very common activity in few of companies every day. A small company might be creating user, maybe one or two users per day, uh, or maybe once one or two per week. But a large enterprise will be creating user accounts every day. Right. So, but however, because we want to ensure that, like, say, uh, the proper approvals have been taken and this account has not been created by uh, without any approvals in the first place, right? So, or it is not created by a hacker, or it is not created by our own administrator without proper approvals, which is also a, a wrong thing, which might lead to 
possible attacks in the future. So for that reason, even for user account created, we are still raising an alert. We don't see the thing is like say we are, we 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 already know it. 89 sorry uh, 85 to 95 percent of the time when uh, when we get the user account created alert it is going to be a false positive right so but still because we have to validate everything that is happening in the network or, or anything sensitive that is happening in the network we will still have to work on those alerts so can you give me a can you can you tell me how many people who are working in SOC get this alert in your SOC team New user account created. Just some discussions here to understand whether what we what I'm saying. OK, so Faisal gets it. Satish gets it. Logins is fine. That's a brute force attack that that we'll definitely talk about. Only OK, when gets only admin account creations. OK, so that means when when somebody is moved on to the admin group. Good enough, but again, even when we talk about this way, no, that uh, when an admin account is created or a person has been given admin privileges or been moved to uh, security sensitive groups, somebody has been moved to security sensitive group. Even in this case, also, uh, if even if it happens, like say two or three or five times in a week, most of the time it's going to be false positive. Most of the time, I'm not saying that, like say, please again, don't go with the with this approach and attitude that like say everything is false positive, but these things are normal activities as well in the companies. Right, so so for that reason, either we like it or not, we have to work on so many alerts unnecessarily. It is actually unnecessary, right? So if you look at it, it's totally unnecessary because we are sure 90% of the time. In fact, the industry standard stands at somewhere around 70% uh, false positives or 78% false positives, right? So the, when the alerts are triggered. And that is going to lead to alert fatigue. Now, what is alert fatigue? Uh, because of too many alerts, people get into a mindset of assuming things. People get the analyst gets into a mindset of assuming things, and they might start ignoring the alerts purely based on their past experiences than giving their hundred percent to every single alert that is being triggered. And you you accept it not uh, accept it or not agree to this point or not. This is human psychology. Once we start seeing something over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, it gets habituated to it, and we exactly know what we assume a lot of things subconsciously, and we'll just close the case as false positive. Right. So. That is the first reason why that is the first pain point of our current SOC teams. And in fact, the biggest one, in fact, right? So everybody who is working in SOC, uh, let's say, can easily agree on this point. The second thing is there are way too many tools working in silos. That means there are different tools that a security analyst has access to, and they're all they're all working in silos, they're doing separately. Right, so your endpoint security tool, maybe you uh, some in some of the companies, especially if you are working in an in-house SOC, not a MSSP. If you're in a service-based company, the limited the, the access will be very limited. Uh, but however, if you are working in an in-house SOC, you might have access to the to your endpoint security solution. Uh, maybe like say semantic manager or EPO from McAfee, this kind of solution. Of course, read-only access. You, you are not going to be administrator of that, or you cannot make any changes there. But you are going to have a read only access. Similarly, you might have read access on your firewall, read access on your, uh, uh, like, say, email gateway, uh, web gateways, and a lot of other tools like that. Your asset management tool to check, uh, uh, like, say, what IT, what asset belongs to whom. Uh, you might also have access to your active directory for querying, right? So, who belongs to which team and where does he sit and uh, to get his contact details, to get his manager details, etc. And obviously, we will be working so many analysis tools. Especially threat intelligence, of course. Like I said, nobody, no security analyst can uh, can uh, can survive without a threat intelligence tool like IP Void or IBM X Force or Virus Total, right? So we need it to check the reputation of uh, IPs, hashes, and URLs, right? So, but again, for, for everything, can you imagine? Like I say, I'm pretty sure when you log in, when you log in, most of you probably might have this habit of like say opening up seven to eight windows parallelly, right? So I used to do this when I was a security analyst back in uh, my days. Right, so there are some some tools that I I definitely want to keep open every day, 
right? So of course so there there will be sim solution. There will be ticketing tool for, for on which I'll be continuously working upon. Either I'll be working on the raising a new tickets or I'll be working on older tickets in my that that have been raised by me. Right, so somebody is asking for more details, etc., etc., etc. Right, then I'll be uh, having access to IBM X4 or Virus Total, one of any of the favorite uh, uh, threat intelligence tool that I typically tend to use. And then I'll probably uh, log into a couple of other uh, solutions where I'll be uh, accessing quite frequently. Right, but however, for every all and uh, uh, any of these tools, I have to keep on logging in separately uh, seven to eight times uh, in an hour in order to work upon one alert. There is no proper coordination between this, right? So that's one of the pain points, right? So, and because of this, we get to the third pain point of the current SOC teams, which is the response and the whole activity that we do in terms of analysis, detection, analysis, and response is obviously slow. Why? Because again, take a talk about the point number two there. Way too many tools working in silos. So just to log in to from one tool to other tool, because all these, let's say most of these uh, tools have uh, auto lockout. So if you are not using that tool for 15 minutes or half an hour, it's going to lock out. Again, you have to enter the username and password, right? So, and you have to open, put the URL, wait for it to load, copy the IP address from your uh, SIM solution and put the uh, put the IP address in uh, IBM X4 or call, let's say virus total, wait for the results to come in and analyze, look at the results. Copy the results, put it into a, your analysis or a, your, your evidence. Can you imagine, like, say, yes, all these are small, small activities, but still they're all consuming time. For example, to check the reputation of an IP address, it might take at least two minutes. When I say reputation, because you also have to document it. Once you check it, right, you cannot just say, oh, okay, fine, this is a clean IP address. You cannot just assume it. You have to document it in your ticket, telling that, like, say, check this in the, in, in the threat intelligence, and it looks like the IP address is clean. Right? So, Considering all these factors, even to just, just check the reputation of one IP address, it might take you two minutes. And right now, uh, analysis might take anywhere between 40 minutes to two hours. Okay. Now I'm talking not talking about the the very curious and interesting alerts here. Some alerts will take days together to analyze. I have worked upon some of such uh, alerts in the past. In my days when I was a security analyst, I have worked on a couple of alerts where, let's say, it has taken some some days in order to get the ultimate, uh, let's say, results, right? So uh, out of own interest, out of own curiosity, some alerts will not let us sleep. So in that case, but however, in general, because we're all working for the salary and we have to just do the justice, especially if you're working in, in MSSP, you have to do, do the justice for your SLAs, right? So most of the cases will be closed anywhere between 40 minutes to two hours, right? So not closed, sorry, uh, analyzed, not closed, analyzed. Now, no standardization in analysis and investigation. Now, this is another pain point of a lot of uh, SOC teams, right? So now, what is what does that mean? No standardization in analysis and investigation. Because mostly it is run by people um, right now. And of course, SOC teams are very people, uh, people-centric, right? So we need a lot of uh, people in order to run a SOC team. And that's why there is so much of aggressive hiring that happens almost every month in a lot of MSSPs. Consider companies like Accenture, IBM, uh, right? So, ATOS and uh, Capgemini, Mindtree. So, these companies hire very, very, very aggressively uh, the role for the role of security analyst. Why? Every new customer they acquire, they need a couple of more people to monitor their network. It's a resource intensive uh, service that we need to offer, right? So, for that reason, we have to rely a lot on people. Now, when we rely on people, people have different perspectives. People have different level of learning. People come from different background. People have different level of experiences. For example, for one given alert, for one given alert, a person who has six months of experience does uh, analysis in a little different way than a person who has three years of experience. Okay, now, let me try to make it a little bit more complicated. Let's consider one person who is staying in the company who has three years of experience in that company. That's for the sake of understanding, let's consider IBM. He's working in IBM, or maybe we'll take a better example. Uh, so that let's say we'll work on an in-house SOC. Let's consider Nike, right? So they're working in uh, Nike and they have the SOC team. In fact, Nike has a SOC team in Bangalore, in India. Uh, and we are working there for three years. One person is working there for three years. Now there is another person who has three years of experience, but he has worked in a different company altogether. 
maybe he has worked in uh, IBM. So now Nike hires him when he's part when he's trying to look for a change. He uh, Nike hires him. Both of these people have three years of experience as security analyst. But the level of analysis that a person in Nike who has stayed in Nike for three years and the level of analysis that is done by the same three years experienced guy, but not knowing the infrastructure of Nike, in the, at least in the initial days, it's going to be totally different. This is going to be totally different. That's what I'm trying to talk about. There is no standardization in analysis and investigation. Yes, somebody might argue that, like say, Anand, uh, aren't we, uh, haven't we solved this problem with uh, playbooks? or run books, or standard operating procedures, SOPs. Yes, to a certain extent, to a certain extent, we have addressed this problem by having, a, uh, let's say, SOP documented, or run books documented, and has solved this problem to an extent. But however, you cannot, you cannot bring the same level of uh, analysis with, within everybody, because some somebody has a great knowledge about the infrastructure. Somebody has a very minimal understanding of the infrastructure because he has just joined two weeks back. And somebody is working in our company from the last three years. So he has he knows in and out. Just by looking at an IP address, he can tell what it belongs to. And like say, what level of analysis it requires. Right. So there are some intrinsic things that a security analyst will get by staying in a company for a long time. Now, that cannot be documented properly. Or not at least, uh, or I, I would put it, not everything can be uh, standardized. Right, so how many of you agree on this? So standardization is a bigger problem for us. So I believe a lot of you people are also, might be working at uh, lead levels as well here. Um, so how many, or even like say senior security analyst, how many of you agree that security standardization? Some of us are bottom feeding contractors, so we get thrown anything. From my monitor doesn't work. To, ah, all right. So Emmanuel is bringing up a totally different problem here. It's a mostly a diplomatic uh, and political problem. Yeah, I understand that, and I have been there. Uh, like say for everything and anything and everything. Like say we will be called upon, right? So it's whether it is a real security incident or security issue or not. So we will be called upon. I understand that. So, so but for for the people who are actually working in SOC and who only do SOC work. Right, so there also, especially if you are a team lead, and in fact, like I say, I have noticed it when I was a team lead and a SOC manager. My biggest hurdle is to ensure that everybody does the same quality of analysis. Everybody does the same quality of analysis, and like say, for a long time I tried it, right? So, but nobody can nobody can come to that level because that's all. Let's say it's it's as simple as some people have excellent communication skills. Some people know exactly how to document, and some people might have extraordinary technical skills, but they don't know how to document it. So that is also going to create a problem, right? So, and there is also a, a biasing here. So there is a, some influence from your past experience. For example, if you are coming from an endpoint security background, you are extraordinary and deep dive into analyzing what happens from endpoint security. But you ignore the network security part of it. You ignore the threat intelligence part of it. But you, because you are coming from an endpoint security background, you want to go deep dive. You want to bother the user. You want to go sit with the user and try to go to the process level and try to understand what's happening there. Because you come from that background. Similarly, a person coming in from network background go, wants to get into a packet level and try, wants to see what's happening there. But he doesn't know much about the process level things. Because of, your, of our past experiences also, sometimes our analysis will be biased. Toward certain things. Okay, this is like uh, almost seven years, but no standardization yet. It's lost. Okay. <laughs> All right. So hopefully we'll get a source solution soon. That's one of the pain problem, pain points of the current uh, SOC teams. Human errors, although not uh, quite often. I just want to include this, but again, I would not agree that this is go this is a major uh, problem uh, uh, right now. When I say human errors, basically this is in terms of documentation. Right, so the, by sometimes uh, you the by the time you copy the IP address from a SIM solution and put it into uh, a threat intelligence tool, the IP might be a little different. Maybe you have missed one digit, right? So and by the time you copy it from uh, threat intelligence to and document and in terms of documenting it to block, to tell the firewall engineer to block the IP address, uh, we might lose a digit there. Again, I'm not saying of course most of us are professionals and we avoid it, but however, because it's been done by humans, right? So it, there is definitely chance for errors and. The human error, I would not say it's an error, 
but there is a limitation because human people human not human people so humans do this because again that problem is communication so as i told you some people have excellent communication skills uh, when in written written uh, communication and some people might not have it right so we might probably consider that problem there and again one of the biggest things skill shortage now i believe one of the biggest challenge that soar platform is here to address is this particular problem that i'm talking about right now skill shortage right so first of all we have very limited uh, cyber security talent in the world and hiring them is a big challenge but even bigger challenge is retaining them right so we all know how aggressive the market is especially right now forget about cyber security the entire industry is very aggressive now especially because of that uh, what is that great resignation the the era is quite, this particular era in it is called as great resignation because a lot of people have resigned jobs and there is a lot of lot of competition for hiring great good talent you know forget about great a decent level talent also there is a lot of competition okay so and uh, because of uh, Uh, that now couple this with uh, skill shortage with and uh, uh, hiring and retaining the talents with these things way too many tools that means every time we get a new person in our team every time we get a new person in our team we have to train him on all the tools that we have yes a few of the tools you might have known and because he is experienced candidate he knows how to work on a firewall but he has worked on a checkpoint firewall here we are using palo alto so it is going to take him at least a week or two to get adjusted to the logs to get adjusted to the uis to get adjusted to the Uh, let's like say the way we deal with the way we communicate with the uh, let's like say the firewall team right so that means uh, uh, because of this uh, skill shortage problem we have to put them into various uh, training uh, there is a some burden on training as well now soar can help us in terms of reducing this pain point significantly not just to a certain extent like say 10 15 20% if i have to give a number probably 75% of these challenges can be fixed if we implement a soar technology if we implement a soar technology all right any questions so far i just take a pause for a minute to see if there are any questions and if you don't have any questions just give me a, all good so that will inspire me to go ahead or else what i'll think is basically you are typing a very very complicated question thanks emmanuel a very long and complicated question so i will just keep waiting for the question to come there on the screen all right and again it's not just a part of uh, looking for your questions this is also because i want you to keep active right so the attention span is very low nowadays for everybody so for that reason i'm i want to ensure that let's say you are back into the training by typing in something so that you at least focus back and start worrying about your girlfriend problems boyfriend problems how many month of uh, stock experience will you advise for want to have before coming into learn so i think at least Six months is a good period because you need to understand various things. In fact, that's the next very next topic. Okay, that's the very next topic as to what can be automated. And when I am discussing about what can be automated, you will know that there are different areas of SOC that we need to focus upon. Right. So we we need to worry about uh, SIM solution and uh, have knowledge about SIM. Plus, you need to also know about uh, who is our CISO, who is the manager, who approves our requests, who from where we have to take the permission in order to search something. and from where we have to who has to approve the permission to delete something right so should, we do I have a permission to contact the end user directly right so all these things will come into picture and to get exposed to all these areas it's going to take time so just uh, in order to answer it in a simple way soar is not only automating your technology soar is not only automating your technology soar is also automating the process now technology can be learned Uh, within a week or two technology can be picked up okay fine to a certain extent to a decent level of uh, sim knowledge i have a decent level of threat intelligence knowledge i have this can be picked up within a week or two but the process knowledge it will only come with experience 
by throwing yourself into a SOC uh, team, only then you'll be exposed to various different processes. So that is going to take time. Okay, so I think six months is good enough period to wait. But uh, if you are in a hurry, and if you are a quick learner, and if you are if you have worked in a similar teams in the past, where you especially so for somebody who is coming in from audit backgrounds, you might already know what's exactly the process that the, most of the companies are following in terms of certain incident response plans. In such cases, you can be a little bit quicker in terms of jumping into SOAR. All right, no problem, Emmanuel. I understand. So uh, Emmanuel is already working on SOAR there. He, he has like probably already opened a Cortex XOR UI right in front of him and is trying to learn the theoretical aspect of it instead of being a trainer himself. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's uh, go ahead then. The question that is, uh, what about certification part? Uh, I'll talk about that uh, part as well. I think I missed it. I think I should have put that as a part of uh, about this training part. I'll talk about certification, Faisal. Uh, the next part is a little, little bigger and I want to focus here. So give me some time. So one of the questions that is bothering you are, for a lot of people is, I want to say to what extent we can automate things and what exactly can be automated in SOC? Because let's say if you think about it, there are various things in SOC. There are different aspects, different tools, different teams, different processes. So how exactly can we even automate these things? Right, so we'll start looking into what could be automated in security operations. The very first thing, assignment of alerts raised in SIM to an analyst can be automated. Right now, it's probably in most of the cases, a SOC team might be having only one or two security analysts in in a, in a given shift. Right, so and like I said, they might be taking the uh, uh, picking up the alerts on round robin basis. I'll pick one, you pick one. I pick one, you pick one. Something like that. Right, so, but however, uh, we can automate this process in terms of ensuring that, like, say, whoever is there on the shift, he will get the alert. And we can add a little bit more intelligence to it because of the machine learning capabilities that most of the source solutions have got. And try to assign an alert which has been triggered in the past, okay, or else try to analyze the alert regarding a specific host right, to a person, to an analyst who has worked upon another alert for the same host because they might be connected. So these things, these kind of machine learning and intelligence can be applied up during the assignment of alerts automatically, right? So who will pick up the alert? So this can be done, not only in terms of based on the shift, which is what most of us uh, are doing right now, because anybody who is there in the shift will pick up the alert. In the shared SOC, it's a little, little different story. There'll be five to six uh, security analysts and uh, they might be monitoring seven to 10 customers uh, at a time. So there, there might be an admin who is assigning the, um, the alerts to each security analyst, but it can be automated through so. The second phase is information gathering phase can be automated. Now, what do I mean by information gathering phase? Things like uh, picking up the important information from the triggered alert. It could be like the, the fields, usually the information in the important fields. For example, if there's a malware alert, we look for the host name. We look for the maybe the IP address. When we get the host name, IP address is not important anymore, but still, who is using the machine? Which department the user belongs to? Oh, no, no, that is not, uh, that we don't get that as a part of uh, our alert, right? So the name of the malware, the action taken, which is very important, right? So the action taken by the antivirus, is it being deleted, quarantined, or cleaned? or unable to clean, uh, delete failed, quarantine failed, things like that. So we'll pick up the important information from the alert. Why? Because these are the, these most, more often than not, these act as a starting point for investigation. For example, if you're trying to solve a murder case, so trying to pick up everything in, uh, in and around uh, uh, the, where the murder has happened. Fingerprints, we don't know whether this fingerprint belongs to the suspect or let's say it can be the fingerprint of uh, probably somebody, maybe, maybe the victim itself. It might not lead us anywhere. But let's say we will try to collect as much as information as possible around the, the murder scene. Similarly, if the alert has happened, we will try to collect as much information as possible first. And we don't know what information is going to come handy when during our analysis. So that's the information gathering phase, which can also be automated. We can extract the important parts of the uh, alert and keep it handy for our 
future analysis. Enrichment of information can be automated. Now, what do I mean by enrichment of information? So in the past, I talked about a host name. In the malware incident, we got to know which host name is infected. Now, as a part of the log itself, as a part of the alert itself, I might also get the who is the user. Who is the user? Because most of the antivirus logs actually gives you uh, actually give you the uh, the username also. Who is the current user using the machine when the malware was detected? But you still need to understand which department he works in. What's his level? Is he a like say somebody who, uh, of a VIP in the company like CXO, or is he a person belonging to logistic team, or is he working in finance team? Because depending on whose machine is infected, we work on the alert different in different way. Depending on whose machine is infected, we might work on this alert in a, a different way. So, so for that reason, I need to understand who is the user, or let's say what's his role, who's his manager, what's the location of this user. So all these things, which is not part of the log. Remember, this enrichment of information means something that is not part of the log, or something that is not part of the alert. For example, connect with Active Directory to get more details about a user. His designation, his phone number, his manager details, etc. Connect to a vulnerability assessment report and get the list of vulnerabilities on the machine. So some machine is behaving a little weird. Maybe there is a high CPU utilization. Now you want to check what does the latest report on the vulnerability scan on that particular machine say? Were there any vulnerabilities identified? Right. So something like that. Enrichment of information. Connect with threat intelligence and check the reputation of file URL and IP address. Yes, as a part of my uh, uh, alert, I already got the IP address. That means uh, we are one of our machine is communicating to a public IP address. Now, what is what is the IP address is? Which country it belongs to? That is not part of the log because my firewall is just telling me that, let's say, one of our, my user is trying to communicate to this particular IP address and I'm dropping it because uh, you are you have asked me to block any communication on port number five 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 five. And this particular one of our internal machine is communicating to uh, 200.10.20.30 on 55555, uh, 55, and I'm dropping it. And because of that, the alert is triggered. Outbound communication uh, on unusual port, right? So now when this communication is uh, happening, now what is this 200.10.20.30? Is what country does it belong to? What services does it host? What uh, what company does it belong to? Is it a good IP address, clean IP address, or a, a, a or a bad reputation IP address? So all these things is the enrichment of information which will be used for our analysis that's what is the next stage or analysis and investigation can be automated now what are those things that we can automate uh, get the file from an end user machine and submit it to sandbox for analysis yes this can be automated it might be hard to believe at this point in time but i'll show you uh, in a couple of days that this can this is possible in fact you will be doing it You'll be pulling a file from a machine and directly submitting it to a sandbox and just waiting for the result without even clicking a single button. Check if an IP address has ever communicated to our network in the past. We got to know that, let's say, in the information gathering phase, we collected the IP address. In the enrichment phase, we got to know that it's a bad reputation IP address. Now, during the analysis phase, we are trying to see if this IP address has ever communicated inbound in the past, maybe two weeks or maybe in, a, in the last one month or anybody else in the company has ever communicated to this particular IP address, maybe on other ports, maybe on 80 or 443. Right, so these kind of uh, things that we do as part of our analysis and document these things. So that's what can be, can also be automated. Has any other user received an email from the same center? Just in case if you're analyzing a phishing alert, I think definitely this is one of the questions that we will ask. Has any anyone else in the company received an email with a, for, from the same sender, typically with the same subject line? User interactions can be automated, right? So you can ask a question to the user saying that, like, say, are you trying to log on to the server? Right, so this can be uh, as a part of uh, a message. It can be as a part of uh, an email that we can trigger from a Cortex XO or any source for that matter. We are, we are not got into Cortex XO as of now. We are just talking about any source solution. Most of these capabilities are for any source solution. We are analyzing the email. Sorry, this is basically we are informing the user about a phishing email reported, telling that, like, say, thanks for submitting the phishing uh, emails, or uh, makes a suspicious uh, phishing email. We are analyzing, we are working on it, and we let you know whether this is a legitimate email or a phishing email. Okay, so that kind of information that you want to correspond with the end user. Finally, ultimately, you should have to tell them whether it is a good email or a bad email. 
right? So the email that you have submitted as or reported is legitimate email and it is safe to open. Just in case after the analysis, you found that it is a legitimate email. So you should let the user know that, like say it's a clean email and it, it can actually open it. So that's a user communication. User communication need not always be in terms of end user communication. Sometimes we will do user communication in terms of seeking permissions. Right, so permission from the manager, IT infrastructure manager maybe, or the CISO, or the IT security manager, permission to search all the mailboxes for the mails with the same subject line. Right, so during our analysis, we found that six people in the company have received the email with the same subject line from the same sender. Right, so now I want to delete it, not even search it, I want to delete these emails. Right, so now how did I search it? I used the SIM solution. Remember SIM? During your analysis, that's what we use, right? So we go and look, uh, see if sender is equal to so and so, and subject line is equal to so and so. If you put it, we'll get to know if uh, anybody else in the company has received it, right? So now again, we don't do it using SIM in the when we have Cortex XO. Cortex XO will do it for us. But however, once we get to know that, like, say, there's a phishing email, and other people in the company have also received it, it's a good thing. Even before uh, they open it, we can delete them by taking appropriate permissions. That also can be automated. Now, if we, to visualize it, just think about it something like this, okay? Just to give a visualization, we'll be doing it uh, hands-on in the near future. We'll be sending a mail and uh, you'll be waiting for the response from the manager and uh, then the process will continue as per the design. Imagine, visualize this. The Cortex XOR will send a mail. We'll search for the mailbox, uh, all the mailbox and uh, identify that there are six people who have received the email from the same center with the same subject line. Now, the Cortex XOR will trigger a mail to your manager, wherein there'll be two buttons, okay? Yes and no. Let's say, identify this problem. Uh, there are six people whom for where the, uh, this particular mail has to be deleted. Uh, do we have the permission to delete these emails? There'll be radio buttons like yes and no, okay? So if he we, if we clicks on yes and submits it, if he clicks on yes in the email, uh, now think of, imagine a HTML-based email. The emails can also have buttons, right? HTML-based emails. Or HTML emails can also have buttons. So imagine uh, HTML based email where there is a radio, radio button. So if it clicks on yes, further process will continue. If it clicks on no, it will wait there for any comments or anything like that. So that's how uh, even seeking permissions can be automated. Response can be automated, right? So creating a ticket, initiating a scan on a volumity assessment scanner, right? So initiating an AV scan. A machine is acting a little weird, and uh, I just want to do a deep scan on that particular uh, machine. So just to check that, confirm that everything is fine, right? So, or blocking an IP address on the firewall, even a URL on a web gateway. All these things can be automated. You don't have to raise a ticket. You don't have to wait for an administrator to take the IP address and put that into uh, their uh, firewall rule or a policy in the web gateway. It can be done automatically. Finally, enhancement or enhancement to the existing security solutions or lesson learned can also be automated. Things like adding the newly detected malware hash to a local threat intelligence. Maybe we are pooling, we have a local pool of our threat intel uh, indicators. So we can add our uh, the newly detected malware. Like how did I detect this new malware? Because it was a new file, no threat intelligence identified as a malware. Now I submitted the sample to the sandbox and sandbox told me that it has a suspicious behavior. Now, for that reason, I'm marking this hash as a suspicious malware, so the suspicious hash. Now, I want to check whether other uh, machines have ever seen this hash in the past. Those kind of things. Sending organization-wide email about the new targeted phishing technique. So maybe one of the companies is being targeted with the uh, with with a specific uh, email. Maybe the company has recently acquired other company, and they're using the attacker is using this information to lure the employees to click. On, on doing this. In fact, like I said, we did this with one of the in, in one of the companies. We ran a phishing campaign. Of course, it was not an actual phishing attack. It's a phishing campaign wherein the company was going public. The company was going public, and the company had issued a lot of shares to the employees in the past. Even even when it was a private company, it was uh, the, they were issued a lot of shares. Now we sent a message saying that, like I said, because we are going public in the next uh, three months, so we want to ensure that, like I say, you have your claim. Of your shares, okay. Click here to ensure that uh, the uh, the the right number of shares have been reflecting in your account. So, in fact, like say, a lot of people actually f fell prey to it because that's the actual information. 
that we are actually uh, that, that the company is actually undergoing because in the next couple of months the company was in fact going public right so and and we used all the logos and the ui things everything as to reflect uh, the company branding and everything so we were able to uh, like say ensure that like say, a lot of people clicked on it and uh, thereby we also kind of got uh, some money for user awareness training as well all right so that's a dedicated phishing technique if uh, now imagine instead of being a phishing campaign what if it's, this was a real attack now because seven or ten people might have got uh, got this email, so we cannot just stop it there. Because this this particular technique, because it's highly targeted and it's, it's going to be a little bit of spear phishing, because the attacker knows about something about our company and he's using you it to lure it. So it's very good thing to inform everybody else in the company, saying that like say this kind of attack technique is going on. So please be aware, report anything to the SOC team immediately. So this kind of uh, lesson learned and uh, message passing can be done using Cortex XOR. Which means basically anything from alert analysis or sorry, triggering the alerts to lesson learned can be automated. The, all the phases of uh, incident response, preparation, identification, of course, preparation is a little different. Identification, like say containment, eradication, recovery, and lesson learns can be automated. Any questions? I'll take a question, Faisal, but just uh, any questions with respect to the topic we just discussed so far? I'll take your question on certification as well. Give me all good, just if you don't have any questions. Just type in AG. Wonderful. Excellent. So, for implementation, will human intervention be reduced? Uh, just give me a couple of minutes, uh, Pawan. I am going to. I, I I do have that slide. In fact, that's going to be a. Uh, that's what I told you, right? So after realizing the potential of what SOAR can do, we'll like say we'll we will be puzzled and like say surprised, like say as to where is SOAR heading. In fact, like say when I got introduced to this tool for the first time, I was like. Can SOC experts survive? <laughs> that was the first question, because so many things are getting automated, and uh, and SOC experts is surviving because of so many requirement of so many cybersecurity security analysts in the market. So that was the first question I, that that was uh, that came to my mind. But anyways, let's say uh, I, I'll I'll talk about that in the next very next uh, slide. Similar. The, I'll answer this question again. It's been covered as a part of my slides. I am just delaying this answering to these questions because there is a dedicated slide for that. Excuse me that I'm not answering every question right away because there is a dedicated slide for that. That's the reason I'm just holding few questions there. All right, so where does SOC fit in? Just in so sorry, SOAR fit in. Just just in case if we are not still able to digest as to where exactly does this SOAR technology fit in. Okay, let's look into a typical SOC flow. Okay, in a typical SOC workflow, this is how it happens. Thousands of log sources, in, in maybe in some companies where there might be hundreds of log sources, but in most of the cases, in most of the enterprises, there are thousands of log sources generating millions of logs. Right, so, and these are fed and processed in SIM, wherein they are run through tens or hundreds of correlation rules, and alerts are triggered. Right, so maybe if you uh, maybe 80, 100, 120 alerts per day. Now these alerts are picked up by security analysts. The analysis on these alerts is done by security analysts. And finally, if it turns out to be a malicious activity, if it turns out to be an incident, then the incident response is taken care of by the incident handlers. Do you all agree upon this workflow? Are we all familiar, familiar with this workflow? Right from the raw logs, I mean, the, right from the log sources till how did we actually even detect the alert and respond to the alert? This is what we are doing on the day to day basis. No, agrees with me. Anybody else? All right. Now, in this whole workflow, where does SOAR fit in? Now, typical or not typical, SOC workflow, I should have removed the word typical there. SOC workflow with SOAR technology. We'll still do the same thing. We'll still do the same thing. 
However, the last two stages, analysis by security analyst and the incident response by incident handler will be replaced with SOAR. Now, if we see there, I did not remove those analysis by security analyst and incident response by incident handlers. I did not remove it from the slide. I just pushed them down because we still need them. It's just that like the majority of the work is handled by a SOAR technology, but we still need security analysts. We still need incident responders. Earlier, a team might have required maybe seven to 10 security analysts. Now we might need three. The number will reduce, but we cannot survive without human uh, analysts. But however, this is where the SOAR is playing a part. It does not work with logs. Uh, log sources, it does not work with correlation in terms of generating alerts. The input for a SOAR technology is the alerts. And the output is the actions that we perform, the incident response actions. I hope this clarifies a little bit of any pending questions that you had in mind as to what is this technology all about. Same LOL is uh, upgraded to SOAR engineers. That is correct. Not SOAR engineers. I would not call them as SOAR engineers. Uh, they will still be analysts, but uh, they'll be they'll be working. They'll be analyzing using SOAR rather than working on SIM and uh, 100 different uh, or like tens of different technologies. There will still be a security analyst using SOAR. Not everybody can be turned to a SOAR engineer right away. When I say SOAR engineer, according to me, I consider the SOAR engineer is equal to Somebody who knows automation, who does the administrative work. Thanks, uh, Farooq. Yeah, so all levels can actually contribute or use SOAR. Explain that again. <clears throat> so again, uh, toss in again, this is what happens, right? So if you are not coming from a SOC background, this might be the problem. So the first uh, typical SOC workflow here what that everybody who anybody who is working in SOC will understand this workflow easily because ultimately the way we identify alerts something wrong that that is wrong happening in our network is because of millions of logs that are generated by thousands of log sources okay so we collect these logs as a part of our sim implementation process uh, uh, sim implementation stage and then we write correlation a sim administrator will write a lot of correlation which is the intelligence that will detect any suspicious activities that's where this phase is all about once it detects the suspicious activities, now not everything that is suspicious is actually malicious. Okay, not everything that is suspicious can actually be malicious right away. Right, so if that is the case, then we don't even need security analysts all these years. So we wanted somebody to confirm whether the suspicious activity is really a security alert or not, whether it is a legitimate activity or a security attack. When it is a security attack, which is actually done here, analysis by security analyst, if it is a security analyst, sorry, if it is a security incident, the incident response uh, responders or uh, incident handlers will take over that and fix the security problem that we have or remediate the security concern that we have. That's the typical workflow that every SOC uh, or every company is following at this point in time. And now where does SOAR fit in is basically it is going to replace the last two phases. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to, the log sources will still be there. They'll be generating millions of logs. There will be a SIM solution required. The correlation rule will still be there. And then it will generate alerts. But instead of an analyst picking up the alert, the SOAR will pick up the alert. Instead of an incident responder responding to the security incident, SOAR will respond to the security incident. But however, we still need a little bit of human intervention. We'll talk about that in the upcoming days as to what level of human intervention might be still required. Because a lot of people, a lot of companies at this point in time do not have confidence to implement response automatically. They are doing analysis uh, very aggressively, uh, automation on analysis very aggressively, but response uh, response part, they are still a little hesitant. Like, for example, why is it like say, what if I accidentally end up blocking the CEO when the CEO's account, when he's giving an important presentation to one of our big client? What if I accidentally end up blocking the CMO's account and he's not able to log into our uh, VPN and access some important files that he wants to share with one of the client on an immediate basis, right? So the, 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 that, that particular business scare is still there because see, security always exists in order to support the business, not to 
let's say stop the business from functioning right so to that uh, for that reason there are some still some hesitation in terms of implementing the response part uh, but however uh, a lot of companies are very aggressive in terms of uh, automating the analysis part <laughs> see so they fired it it happens it happens i've seen it happen actually not not in 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 similar in in this situation in in this case, in this uh, kind of situations but i have i have uh, worked in a company where the manager got fired because of a security incident not security incident in fact not even a security incident because he upset a particular business leader all right now the important question that you guys were asking will soar replace security analyst jobs there is both good news and bad news about it let me just give you the bad news which is very simple and straightforward the answer is yes soar will definitely replace security analyst jobs then what is the good news good news is that it's a new technology it's in a very infant stage okay so that means the soar solutions themselves are getting mature day by day they themselves are still getting mature day by day and less than 15% of soc teams are currently employing soar it was 8% in 2019 it was 8% it was a survey conducted by uh, by uh, rapid 7 right so 8% of companies were using so, sorry 8 come 8% of soc teams were using soar solution right now it is less than 15% still right so i it kind of like say covid actually kind of uh, expedited the process and it will also slow down the process it expedited the process by under, making them making the companies realize the need of soar technology it is slowed down because of lot of lot of logistical issues so uh, unable people unable to travel to, the consultants could not travel the online the, the 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 online work was not so effective because soar right when we talk about soar you need to be with the soc team you need to be playing and talking to a soc team on, a, on a, almost on a daily basis only then you can effectively automate it right so so far let's say i have worked with six different customers and uh, i can tell you with <laughs> a, a very certain level of confidence right so most of the work that i have done is waste i hope that nobody from palo alto is listening to this so most of the work that i have done is waste because the soc team themselves are not clear as to what they have to do every every now and then like say they come up asking for like say changing the process right so and i work with one customer maybe for 3 months or 4 months and within that time by the till the end of the my my project there they still don't know how the process works they still don't know how the process works right so that's what is happening with most of the soc team and i'll i'll talk about the, something else also here widespread widespread adoption will take at least 2 to 5 years right so for example right now sim is kind of like say a, a mainstream technology almost every enterprise every large company is using sim that's not a, it's not no brainer at all right so and we know that every now and then there is a demand for sim engine, uh, sim engineers because sorry uh, there is a decent demand for sim engineers now because every now and then a company will keep replacing the sim solution today they were using ibm curator uh maybe they are going for splunk so they, we need a splunk expert now right so and then we they, like say some company might go from splunk to like say maybe logarithm from logarithm to maybe uh, securonics i don't know why somebody would go for securonics but yes they might uh because they are leaders according to the leaders quadrant a uh, magic quadrant so like this there is still a decent level of demand for sim engineers similarly right now there is a peak in terms of demand for soar engineers because there are no enough soar engineers all to put together i think there are not more than 1000 soar engineers i think i am being very very liberal here in terms of mentioning 1000 numbers also there are very few soar engineers out there in the market right so and the widespread adoption will take 2 to 5 years oh brother so okay so okay so not every soc team i am touching this point adinesh whatever you mentioning there not every soc can implement soar right away even if they want to and even if they have the budget to right so just because like say you have the money you cannot just end up using a putting a soar for example if i have built a new soc team right now okay i have to run the soc without the soar right at this point early stage only after understanding the process only after defining the process like say there is a cmm level that can we can adapt to the Uh, to the soft team, CM level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. 
Level five is where the automation comes. But the SOC team has to still go through level one, level two, level three, level four. Level four means quantitatively managed state. Level four means quantitatively managed state. Just in case if you are being confused about what I'm talking about here, let me bring up the CMM level. Quickly, just uh, give me less than 15 seconds here. I'm talking about this. I think I just forward this one. Initial stage, CMM level one is initial, level two is managed, level three is defined, level four is quantitatively managed, and then comes optimizing. This is where you get into uh, like say automation and everything. That, that means uh, the sim, the SOC has to be implemented, we, the process has to be built, the process has to be followed, the process has to be measured, and then comes automation. Right, so, and uh, yes, that's the good news for it, in fact. The last good news is that you are learning so at the right time. It's process improvement and automation, both automation and improvement comes into level five. All right, so any questions here with respect to SOAR uh, and the job and any any other questions associated with this particular slide? Two things that you need to take away, key takeaway from this slide is that like the SOAR tool, tools themselves are still getting matured day by day, right? So, and, and um, not every SOC team right now is capable of uh, implementing a SOAR. And I'll tell you the most interesting fact. Adapting a SOAR technology is going to take years. For example, when we are working with these uh, customers, different customers, creating one playbook, especially when if it is a long process, uh, like fishing and all, right? Creating one playbook and to ensure that it is working and running without any errors, and that we have considered all possible scenarios, it's going to take anywhere between two months to three months period. It's going to take two to three months in order to implement one end-to-end -end automation for one alert. Now imagine that, like say, you might, your SOC team might be generating close to around 30 to 40 different types of alerts. I'm not talking about the number of alerts that get generated every day. I'm talking about the different types of alerts that will be generated in your SOC team. There might be around 25 to 30 or 35, right? So again, I'm not talking about the correlation rules also. Right? So because there are some right, some correlation rules that will never trigger in your company. Maybe like say malware outbreak and DDoS attacks. You might it might not have it might not have triggered at all. But for different types of alerts, if one alert is taking two to three months, now imagine if you want to automate everything, it's going to be somewhere like say two to three years project. And you know what happens within that? Your technologies gets changed. Your process gets changed. That means it's a continuous process. Working on SOAR or working on automation is a continuous process. So if you get into SOAR and if you become a SOAR engineer right now, your job is very stable for next seven to 10 years. I am coming to that point, Pawan. It's covered in the slide. Will there be any real time support? Uh, pros and cons. What are the pros and cons? Wani, can you just elaborate on this? Pros and cons of using a SOAR technology or pros and cons of learning SOAR technology or you need to elaborate the question. I think by now you should already have an understanding of pros about the SOAR. The cons is that. The cons is that like say it will it will be a mess when, we, when you are implementing a SOAR technology, right? It's going to be a big mess in the initial days. Right, so none of the none of the automation that you create will work. The steps will be, uh, let's say, the the automation is different, and the process that you used to follow is a little different. So those kind of things are there. Yeah, that's right. But let's say, what was the question? Pros and cons about attending SOC experts training. Pros and cons about uh, seeing this slide on a remote session. Pros and cons about listening to my voice. I wanted uh, wanted to expand on the question. Pros and cons about a SOAR tech, implementing a SOAR technology. Pros, I think we have discussed a lot about pros. Cons is that, right? So it is going to create a little bit of, uh, uh, it will mess up a little, little bit of things in the initial days. 
but otherwise the whole purpose of bringing in this is basically to solve some problems so obviously the pros outweigh uh, the cons and that's why everybody will end up using eventually using a so solution if there is, if the question is any, any, if the question was anything different please do not do not hesitate to post that question uh, wani so satish what is this will there be real time support for what if you're talking about this training no uh, we, there will be real time hands on practice is there i don't know what do you mean by support but uh, in case of uh, the real implementation you might get support from the tac technical assistance assistance center from the from the uh, from the vendor and you might need to interact a lot with your existing soc team right so if you want to elaborate that question please do for now i'm moving on to the next slide what does it take to be good at soar a lot of you guys also have this question right so the very first thing is good understanding of soc processes in an organization so technologies can be learned very easily actually but the soc process the maturing that process and understanding the process how things flow from one place to other place one one team to other team is what you need to and one tool to other tool is what we need to understand effectively i mean if we struggle in real time playbook in our organization okay so if you are struggling with the real time uh, things see you will you will you will actually face this problem in the near future when you are when you are doing this training right you are going to create your own playbook and you are going to face this problem and because even as simple a task like getting my getting the email address of a manager is going to be little challenging for the first time when we are implementing it right so because of the way we have to understand how sort treats the data etc etc is going to be challenge but however if you are facing the problem with the logic can be fixed by discussing with the team the problem with the logic of the playbook can be discussed by uh, sitting with the soc team the challenge or the any issues that you are facing with the tool that something is not happening and it's erroring out can be fixed by working with the different vendors vendor tag now here when i why do why did i say different vendor tag because more often than not the problem is not only caused by your sore technology the problem is also sometimes caused by the other in technology that we are working with maybe let's like say we are using a, a checkpoint firewall and the checkpoint firewall and our current sore is not working out properly there is some 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 uh, some issue in the integration so we will have to bring this up to the uh, notice of the uh, the sore tag okay but however more than any of these challenges you will be facing the the technical challenge that means converting the process converting the logic into technology okay and uh, i was never a developer i was never a developer i'm just trying to give this analogy uh, throughout my 13 years of experience for the first 11 years i did not learn any coding but because i wanted to become a soar engineer i ended up learning uh, python in the last one and a half years uh, to a decent level i know i understand the code and everything and more often than not whenever we are facing some problems right it is basically like putting the thread in the needle in the needle hole right so it takes so much of attention and even after after you do it it's not a big deal it's not like say, you, have, you have achieved a great task there for and i have faced this several times right so i am trying to get the email address of the manager or i am trying to get an ip address from one of the uh, one of the integrations along with the ip address there is the associated port number is also coming up that is uh, 10.10.10.4 colon 4000 it's coming up now i want to get rid of that uh, colon 4000 so i am trying to use regex i am trying to use other logic so a lot of things i i work upon and it might not work so if you are a developer you might have known that i know what should what the code should do but it is not doing it this is the challenge that we will be facing a lot of time this is the problem that we will be facing a lot of time now these things you can only work, uh, like say get better and better at it with uh, facing a lot a lot more issues if you are a good developer you can be a great uh, soar engineer as we uh, as a batch and group can we work together in the back end absolutely uh, for in fact like say uh, i i want you guys to work uh, work uh, together so that will be really good we will we will figure out how we will be doing the lab activities we will be figuring out how we will be doing the lab activities all right so basic working knowledge of different tools and technologies now the basic working knowledge because 
you don't have to be an expert in all the technologies and 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 in fact you have to you you will be working with at least uh, for every company that you're working with you will work with at least 12 to 15 different technologies including their ticketing tool uh, active directory of course is common in most of the companies and uh, the email server is common in most of the companies however it might slightly vary because some might be using the uh, the cloud version of outlook i mean sorry uh, the oa uh, or somebody be using the on prem exchange server right so now the web gateways are different so somebody might be using cisco web secure somebody might be using semantic web gateway somebody might be using mcafee web gateway somebody might be using checkpoint firewall somebody might be using palo alto firewall somebody might be using cisco asa that means every time you jump from one company to other company or even if you are sitting in the same company you need to have a proper understanding of these technologies to a basic level you don't have to be an admin level uh, knowledge on these technologies so you need to have little bit knowledge about each and every technologies that is being used in a company okay to what extent we'll talk about that in the near future right so in fact i have already shown you right so in one of the integration that we'll be doing here is so you need to know how hybrid analysis works how hybrid analysis that is the malware submission works uh, and let's say wireless total integration and something like this service now i did not know service now at all i have i have used it several times but i did not know so many things about service now till i became a sore engineer how things run in the back end right so how things run in the back end so i did not know a lot of these things so uh, and this is not going to be a big challenge this is not the working like say learning basic working knowledge about different tools is not going to be a big challenge as long as you are a good learner i think you can pick it up very quickly that means let me give you an example in order to learn a new technology for the sake of integrating that and working with it in on as a sore engineer let's say i have to work with um a new xdr solution right so komodo xdr there's a company called komodo they have xdr so i have to work with komodo xdr so i might take around half a day let's say 4 to 5 hours in order to understand the tool better and i understand the integration and what we can do using cortex xor on the komodo xdr half a day i'll spend in terms of uh, researching on this tool and exactly getting to know the terminologies that they use because to understand wh how what to do on the cortex xor we have to understand what is the language that they speak so in order to get to know those things i might take half a day maybe some technologies might extend it to two or three days i might take two two or three days to learn a different technology in order to ensure that i'm able to integrate that effectively in cortex xor basic of scripting preferably python is essential right so now again the question the follow up question is can i be a sore engineer without scripting the answer is you can survive but you cannot excel you can still get a job i got a job without having a uh, without knowing a single uh, i mean not writing a single code line of code and having no idea about uh, what uh, scripting is only after i got the job and i started working i realized that uh, i need some level of uh, scripting so that i can work without anybody's assistance right so rather than like say waiting for yeah, for rather than raising a ticket for everything this is not happening this is not happening small tasks can actually be automated by ourselves by writing some small scripts it's you don't have to even like say if you ask me how much time do i need to spend on python in order or like say to you know into learn a scripting language in order to uh, be a excellent uh, sore engineer i think somewhere around one month if you dedicatedly invest your one month period like say two hours every day in terms of learning a uh, scripting language i think that's going to help you that's enough you don't have to be a uh, awesome programmer where you have where you develop uh, uh, applications like uber or anything you don't have to that not that level of knowledge just to interpret the code and uh, how to send a instruction to the third party through api integration and, and how to get the response and more importantly how to catch the response and how to process the response so few very few basic things we'll be talking about that during the future classes we are not going to go deep into that but we will be talking about it in fact i think um, our other trainer kumar will help you in terms of one custom integration as well so farooq says as per my understanding i think palo alto network has next generation firewall global product vpn panorama data lake primary security vendor and sure technology is competing it complementing it but yes microsoft has edge as a vendor okay so that's a good opinion there good uh, good thought uh, farooq in fact uh, <clears throat> that is next slide 
right? So not exactly what we're talking about, but it's very similar to a similar topic that I have picked up there. Any questions so far in with respect to SOAR and security analyst jobs and what does it take to be a good SOAR engineer? I think you're answering somebody's question there, so I did not follow that question. Nowadays, Azure and other vendors have SIM and so solution in same environment. Why not Palo Alto? Okay, coming to that point. In fact, that is that is the question that I'm trying to answer actually. That is the question that I'm trying to answer next. See, this is what makes me a good trainer. I'm very proud of uh, myself on this area that I have covered almost everything that you might actually ask as a part of this slides. Okay, so the next question, the next slide. I will try to do that, uh, Farooq. We will come up with a training soon. Uh, will SOAR replace a SIM? Right, so I think, like I said, this is the question that, uh, similar question that Venu was pointing about. So SOAR acts as a complementary solution to SIM and not as a competitive solution. Okay, SOAR currently is a complementary solution. That means it acts from the point where SIM responsibility ends. From that point onwards, it takes things forward. So it is not going to compete with SIM. Now we know that SIM does the heavy lifting of processing millions of logs and generating few alerts, maybe 100, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 alerts every day. SOAR starts with these alerts and handles the analysis and the incident response. So there's no real overlap in terms of the responsibilities. However, SOAR can be combined with a SIM solution, which is what is happening with a lot of companies in today's world. SOAR can be combined with a SIM solution. Okay, uh, but will SOAR replace uh, SIM? I doubt it, at least in the not in the next seven to 10 years. When XDRs take over, that's when probably, again, it's not going to replace, uh, uh, actually, I, I'll put it in this way. XDRs will replace SIM, not SOAR. XDRs will replace SIM, not SOAR. SOAR starts from the time the alerts are generated. So somebody has still has to do the heavy lifting of, uh, uh, let's say, crunching millions of locks there. Somebody still has to do that heavy lifting. Uh, no. Palo Alto Cortex XR does not have a SIM. It doesn't have SIM capabilities. In fact, Palo Alto does not have a SIM, a SIM solution at all. Palo Alto, under their product umbrella, they don't have SIM. They have this standalone SIM technology. And for some reason, and I, and I definitely vouch it for the very aggressive sales team, they are doing extraordinarily well. Uh, like I said, I think uh, 2022, this year they will, uh, Gartner might come up with uh, the leader squadron for uh, magic quadrant for SOAR. And I'm pretty sure Palo Alto will stand in the first, second or third position. In fact, of, uh, in, in, in terms of number of implementation, Palo Alto is very, very, very aggressive, very aggressive. Okay, so again, I might have very limited knowledge in the, in the, in the sales uh, channel here, but I believe it's something like, like say, for every, uh, let's say four, three to four products that somebody, all the other vendors sell. I think there's one Palo Alto. It was some, around 30, 35% of the market is already captured by Palo Alto. Again, this is just my analysis. I am not sure about it. I cannot, don't take my word for it. Now, so who are these SIM vendors? So, sorry, SOAR vendors. So we're talking so much about this technology. Who are the vendors who are developing this technology? So we have IBM Resilient. Okay, Resilient was a standalone company. IBM acquired it. Yes, sir. This is going. This is going to make it very easy for you to get a L1 job. That is, uh, you. You. Are, in fact, you are going to learn more than what is required for L1 job. L1 job is pretty sure, obviously, very confident. Easily, will get a L1 job or L, even a senior security analyst jobs. Soar engineer is where you have to put a little bit of efforts on you, for, uh, like so with you, uh, by yourself, especially by learning a little bit of Python and other things. Automation expert, no. It is going to take you at least one year time after you start working in Soar to become an automation expert.
All right. They have a comparison, but I don't think they have come up with a magic quadrant yet for Soar. Okay, the other vendor is Phantom. Uh, Phantom was a standalone company. Splunk acquired it and made it as Splunk Phantom. Simplify, which is now acquired by Google, is a very good uh, uh, Soar platform. I have watched their demonstrations, really good. Rapid7 Insight Connect is another one. Swimlane is another product. Thread Connect, can you believe that? I was surprised to see Thread Connect entering into Soar market. Thread Connect, as I knew, when I started working on uh, working in security, I knew Threat Connect as a threat intelligence uh, platform, but now they have their own SOAR platform. At this point in time, I can confidently tell there are more than 50 SIM sol sorry, SOAR solutions, 50 vendors who have developed the SOAR solutions, including companies like Torque, T O R Q, Torque, Secura, Sumo Logic has their own SOAR platform now, ArcSight has their own, uh, own uh, uh, SOAR platform. Securonix has their own SOAR platform. Incorrect. Poruk, even that was, that, is my, that was my assumption as well. Threat Connect is not just a threat intelligence platform. It is, they are also developing SOAR platforms now. Sorry, they have a SOAR technology now. Now, the one that we will be developing is Cortex XOR. Sorry, not developing. That one, the one that we will be learning is Cortex XOR. Okay. Now, a little bit about the history of Cortex XOR. Okay. So, this product was developed by a company called as Demisto. They had developed the SOAR platform. Palo Alto in 2019 acquired Demisto. Okay. And they came up with a wing called as Cortex Wing. I don't know whether it is a stand. It was a standalone company or not, but I don't see any acquisition news about Cortex. But I just go with as. Palo Alto introduced a new brand called as Cortex. And because they have also acquired Demisto, because they also acquired Demisto, they put SOAR into the Cortex umbrella. Now, what are the different umbrellas that Palo Alto has? I'll just show, uh, tell you in a couple of minutes. Palo Alto moved the SOAR under the umbrella of Cortex and they rebranded it as XOR. They rebranded it as XOR. Right now, we call it as Cortex XOR. So if you if somebody asks you about Demisto, we are learning the same tool. If somebody asks about Palo Alto SOAR, we are learning the exact tool. If somebody asks about Cortex XOR, we are learning the same tool. All the three tools are same. It was it started with Demisto, acquired by Palo Alto, moved under the umbrella of Cortex, and rebranded as XOR. Yes, ServiceNow also has a SOAR platform now. Almost everybody is, is getting into that. It's a hot market now. Okay, so I'll not talk about the features of uh, SOAR right now um, because I want to talk about the assignment part. Anyways, we'll, say we'll be talking about the Palo Alto from tomorrow, sorry, Cortex XOR from tomorrow onwards. It's going to take some time. I, if I have to walk through all these, uh, these points, it's going to take some time. So I'll, I'll skip that point for tomorrow. I want to give you some assignment, okay, for tomorrow's class. So everybody, please create an account in Palo Alto Beacon. Okay, Faisal was also also asking about the certificates. So there are some certification that we can get. Soar engineer certificate, analyst certificate, right? So we can get this certification. They are free of cost right now in Palo Alto Beacon. Beacon is their university. I'll demonstrate that to you. So go to Palo Alto Beacon. Beacon is the name of the Palo Alto University where you will be able to uh, get a lot of uh, knowledge about their products. Once you log in, once you log into this uh, create account, you can create it using uh, Palo Alto, sorry, um, with your Gmail account itself, your personal email address, etc. Once you log in, now that I have logged in, I'll be able to see all the courses. So here, these are the different umbrellas currently that Palo Alto has, right? So uh, Strata, Sase, and then Prisma and Cortex, right? So these are the different umbrellas in which it's selling the products, the different brands it's using. Now I'll obviously get into Cortex, and here I'll go to Digital Learning, and I'll go to Cortex XOR. And I have around four or five courses actually 
even though there are uh, we are seeing seven there one two three four five five courses are there forget about this what's new in 6.2 and uh, uh, mssp training administrative training for mssp we don't worry about those two things but uh, we eventually we'll end up learning introduction to cortex xor cortex xor analyst training and soar engineer training all the three trainings we have to do but for today just complete this introduction to cortex xor before coming to class tomorrow and there will be a separate group created and uh, let's say you will you receive an email right so you will not start the meeting you will just join the meeting in fact uh, because we have already created a separate whatsapp group for people who have already enrolled i'll be sharing the link tomorrow in the group itself okay so before you come to the class tomorrow please create account with uh, palo alto beacon and complete introduction to cortex xor it's just 30 minutes it's very easy to complete that's it from my side guys any questions i think we can i call in relation to my enrollment please uh sure emmanuel okay yes i really don't want you to enroll for this course <laughs> the reason being like say you are already working on the sore i don't think so we'll be able to give you any more knowledge than what you already learned from your uh, your, your on job um, experience that right? so that's the sole reason but just in case if you think that like say learning it in an organized fashion is going to help you get better at it don't hesitate to join okay you work with the soc engineers all right so if sor is new yes absolutely you are more than welcome to uh, to join the trainings you are more than welcome to join the trainings we get the assignments and notes in the in the chat group did we get course completion certificate also yes i mean like say who cares about course completion certificate from court like say from soc experts man even like say a lot of people ask us this also and even for our csc programs or uh, ccl programs uh, we i tell it openly they don't have any value once you complete these uh, things right so let me show you i when i was doing my own uh, research on this university we we will get the certificates those certificates are valuable you can just definitely tell yourself that like say i am uh, palo alto cortex certified or like say cortex certified engineer because you will get certificates like this give me less than a minute and i'll show you you get certificate like this that after you complete the introduction uh, to a cortex excel because there is an exam after that okay the certificate of acknowledgement confirms that uh, anand has uh, successfully demonstrated the knowledge to complete the assessment based certificate in introduction to cortex excel similarly you will get it for uh, analyst and soar engineer as well and i'll help you in terms of clearing those Okay, so Emmanuel, this is for you. So just uh, text me on WhatsApp on this number. I have given you my number there. You can text me on WhatsApp. Uh, Faisal, it's a uh, I I I again. Give me time till tomorrow. Okay, give me time till tomorrow, Faisal, because again. Emmanuel was right away. Even before I started speaking, he started speaking first and told, like, say, I want to get into this training. So he is in in the pipeline first. So as I told you, we are looking for the right number of uh, uh, right number of uh, people because I want it to be 15 so that we can give three uh, one instance for three people. Okay, because like say we you know to integrate and all those things. So if you if I give only one instance, right? Even though if I create a very powerful machine and give one instance to everybody. you will end up getting confused a lot who created what and all you can just text me in the whatsapp and i will uh, uh, take care of the registration but i might need till time till tomorrow that is in, according to india time i might uh, need time till tomorrow that means till you are uh, today evening uh emmanuel i am assuming that you are calling from i mean you are attending the trainings from us uk okay so Till you are noon, then, or maybe late evenings actually. 
tomorrow morning when i wake up all right so to be very precise tomorrow by 9 9:30 am ist i'll have some clarity on who else can enroll okay why is evening time is chosen i am currently engaged uh, i wanted to do this training first time in fact like i said there are mo much more capable trainers in terms of technical skills but i want to get a get a like say give a good uh, first hand uh, experience of delivering the training because i my skills are in terms of making things easier my skills are, are like say as a mentor are in terms of making things easier for people to understand so i am the one who will be walking through the training first and uh, and followed by that like say other trainers will take up this training in the near future uh, once i understand like say where people get struck and if you see the the way that ppt is designed is is designed to answer all the questions right so similarly after undergoing a couple of uh, batches right i'll know exactly where the student faces problems and where do we need to stress more and then we'll design the curriculum effectively so that anybody can do the trainings later on so that's what is the plan the second thing is then why did not i do the same trainings in the morning is because i'm already engaged in sock manager training so running very effectively when you will be surprised to know in fact i'll be inviting you to speak to that batch very soon <clears throat> conflicting with time work time sorry about that venu so i have a tech with uh, yeah, okay palo alto i have to <laughs> good luck with that emmanuel so the timing will be 7 pm to 9 pm ist the training time will be that correct since i am advised to pull out uh, please can i also uh, chat with you privately so that i can uh, uh, sure uh, uh, toss uh, like say toss in definitely please uh, do text me no problem where can we find this recording so this particular recording uh we will be putting will be putting this into the course okay and also a part of this recording will go into youtube as well we are planning for that i think give me give us 2 to 3 days time but otherwise all the tomorrow, from tomorrow onwards the recordings will be available in the teams itself so because it will be made up made as a part of the group anybody who is part of the group will get the recordings okay for people who have enrolled please have a look out for your whatsapp group and also your email okay just in case if you are getting confused with the email what you have received and other what not do not worry by 6:45 pm tomorrow i'll be sending you the link to join the class in the whatsapp group wonderful so i think it's it it, it almost covered the similar topics that we discussed uh, today that i have not registered on time uh, it would be very helpful if the opportunity join bring uh, shiva oh, i'll check that uh, it was about. again don't worry guys i mean like say you're not uh, you, you you i will not make you wait for a long time i think the next batch is going to be uh somewhere 7th of march 7th of march is going to be the next batch so don't you will not be it's not like there's not there's no long wait time and the advantage might be okay not to discourage anybody who has already enrolled for the trainings the advantage may be the trainings will be a little bit more matured if you are coming for the second or the third batches <sighs> okay so yes uh, sorry it's a 7 7 pm to 10 pm ist we'll figure out that the 9 pm to 10 pm is actually the practice hours so we'll figure out if we need uh, the the immediate next hour after the theoretical class or uh, we will be uh, practicing it some other time okay i am okay to keep the server like say for like running for 6 to 7 hours every day i'll do that final right now my my phone is not with me right now so all right wonderful any other questions uh, that you still need to ask for people who have enrolled this recording will be available for you tomorrow in the course in the in the in the in the portal there where you have purchased the course plus all the other recordings will also be there eventually it's a manual process that we have to download the recordings from here and then upload it there so it's going to take at least one day all right venu sure all right guys thank you very much for joining this session so i hope you got a good uh, idea about what sore is and like so how it's going to help your career and also a little bit uh, technical knowledge on 
what SOAR is. From tomorrow onwards, we'll start uh, getting introduced to Palo Alto itself, Palo Alto Cortex XOR, and uh, we'll go deep dive into the product and uh, uh, eventually in the next uh, month or so, try to become, uh, we try to apply for Cortex XOR uh, jobs and more importantly, get them. Okay. Thanks uh, for your time. You guys have a wonderful rest of the evening and day for people from outside India. Take care. Bye-bye.